Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com Join, join, join my VIP program. Just do it. Speak English powerfully. Speak English confidently. Speak English fluently. Speak English effortlessly. Join my VIP program. Commit and join today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Tomorrow, tomorrow we finish our third book, our third book club book. Man, we're doing well. Our third book that we've done. We do the last chapter tomorrow of Dumbing Us Down by John Taylor Gatto. Such a fantastic book. We may do another John Taylor Gatto book. Not surprisingly. You know, education, learning, teaching, coaching. You know, these topics are central for me. And so I imagine we will return again to Mr. Gatto. He's got a few other books. There's one I haven't read yet, actually. It's called the, I think it's called The Underground History of Education in America. That might be interesting. Anyway, I'm going to look over some more of his books. And in the future, we might do another John Taylor Gatto book. Or, and or, we might do another book about homeschooling, specifically about homeschooling. You know, John Taylor Gatto's book, I'd say, is probably about 80% focused on the disease, <laughs> right? The, the problem. He's describing in great detail the evil of the school systems and the system of schooling that we have and we've had it for about 150 years and about 80 percent of the book is really focused on the problem and that's important it's always important to first understand the reality the ugly truths right the red pill it's always the first step with the red pill is you know a real honest careful look at reality which is often ugly and then the next step is to get stronger and to right and to improve it he does share some solutions but i'd say again most of his book is about the problems which is fine because we do need to understand that so maybe the next education book not the next book but the next education book i choose might focus more on the solutions kind of flip this and focus 80 percent on the solutions so i'd like to find a book that discusses details about homeschooling and describing you know different methods and solutions to homeschooling I know some good homeschooling books, but mostly, you know, each one focuses on one method. And there are many, many ways to do it. So, I don't know. I'll, anyway, I'll do some research about it. I'll choose one. Still not decided exactly what book we're doing next. I'm considering a few books. I'll let you know. Let's continue, though, with John Taylor Gatto. Giving you a, a few audio podcasts this week. I am giving, during these podcasts, I'm giving you kind of a preview of our last chapter, chapter five. A few of the main ideas, and tomorrow we'll review the whole chapter. I've got a few quotes from chapter five today. Here's a good one. If people are machines, school is a way to make these machines more reliable. 
Next quote. The lie that there is one right way in human affairs, human life. There's one right way to do something. This is the lie, the central lie of schooling. And finally, the goal of schooling is to treat people like machines or to create a hive society. A society like ants or bees or insects. All right, let's take these ideas. Let's go back to the first one. If people are machines, and this is how schools see people, by the way. They don't see your child as a human being, a full living human being. That's not how the the system, right, looks at it. You or your child. They treat you like a machine. This is the philosophy, the mentality of schools. You know, yes, there are some nice teachers, of course. But overall, when you look at the logic, the thinking of the system and how it's created and designed, you see that it's designed like a machine. It's designed as if each child is just a machine. And that the purpose of the school is to make the machines more reliable. That's interesting. So the purpose is not education. The purpose is definitely not excellence. Definitely don't want excellence. The purpose is not individuality or uniqueness. C completely the opposite of that. No, no. We don't want to treat each child differently. Right? Recognizing each child has their own special strengths and weaknesses, needs, personalities, all of these things. No, no, no. That's too human. No, no. We, we treat them like machines. And what we want from machines, like in a factory, is reliability. This is the central focus of the schools. Reliability. Everybody the same. Make everybody the same. Treat everybody the same. Make them more the same. So that's why every child must study exactly the same thing at exactly the same time using exactly the same books and materials and then they are graded using exactly the same tests. Right? Because we want to make them the same. They're easier to control if they're all the same. They're more like machines. Right? The Matrix. Just like in The Matrix. The movie. Gotta watch that movie. The Matrix. So many great messages in that movie. Really describing our modern society. That movie. So, school is designed to make your child into a machine think and act like a machine, a reliable machine. Reliable is easy to control. If everybody's different and everybody's free and everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses and ideas, they're harder to, con to control, right? The people at the top, harder to lie to them, harder to control them. But if everybody's the same and they're all getting the same beliefs, and the same ideas and exactly the same teaching at the same time, at the same age. Ah, then everyone starts to think the same, act the same. See this, the communists, the corporate communists now and all these big companies and the other various communists. I call them communists. I don't call them what you want. Socialists, globalists, whatever word you want to use. But... They, they like to say the word diversity, diversity, but diversity is a complete lie, a huge lie. Diversity is a way to, you know, they talk about diversity and they talk about, you know, skin color or other very surface kinds of diversity. But what they absolutely hate is diversity of thinking, diversity of ideas. That they don't want. They want everybody thinking the same, acting the same. That's the purpose of school. Make your child a machine. So that one is basically the same as the other. And along with this comes this lie of one right answer. That there's always one right way to do something. And this is what you'll see when people... Politicians and others, when they argue about school and how to make school better or improve it... Right? They all have the same mentality that there's one right way to do it. 
This is the, they all share that belief. Now they have different ideas about what's the one right way. Some will say, oh no, we have to test more. Others, oh no, we need more hours per day. Oh no, we need smaller classes. Oh no, we need this, we need that. More training, more money, whatever. But what they all agree is that there's one right way. If we just find that one right way, that one right same way to teach and train every single child exactly the same, ah, then we will achieve utopia. Animal farm, finally. <laughs> And this is a big, 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 big lie. One of the big lies, and it's kind of a hidden lie, this idea of one right answer, one right way. There's not one right way to live. There are many right ways to live. Everybody has their own path in life. But the schools don't like that. Too difficult. If you have 20 kids, 30 kids, you can't treat them as individuals. You can't worry about their individual weaknesses and strengths and worries and needs. Not too many of them. You have to control them and do everything the same. And what they're trying to do is create a hive society. What's a hive? A hive is like a nest. It's like a home. It's the home of insects. It's an insect home. A hive. But it's a specific kind of insect. It's the kind of group insects. For example, ants and bees. We call the bee a bee hive. That's the home of bees, right? A bee hive. So what's a hive society? A hive society is where Again, everybody's basically the same. Like everyone is exactly the same. They're behaving the same, right? Just like bees right there. You've got maybe a, f a huge number of worker bees and one queen bee. But you know, they're, they're all basically the same and they, they kind of all think the same, respond the same, act the same. It's a hive society. And that's what they're trying to create with humans is like a hive mind, a hive uh, society. Kind of a similar idea, right? Instead of us thinking of treating everyone like a bunch of machines, robots, similar idea, right? Ants, like we're just little insects. Just a huge number of insect people with a queen or a king at the top. This is the vision, this is the mentality of the school system that we have now. For the last 150 years or so, this is the schooling system. You're a bug, you're an ant, you're a machine. Your children are just machines, just insects. So how do we defeat this schooling system? There's another nice quote from also from chapter 5. Because of course we want to start moving now. We, we understand how evil the school system is. We understand that it's kind of a new system you know, in human society. This is new. It came with the Industrial Revolution. Oh, right, with the Industrial Revolution we learned to make machines and then make factories to make more machines, right? the machine age. <laughs> but unfortunately, what we also d learned was how to treat people like machines, how to train people like machines. And that has taken away our humanity. And this is the great sadness the great loneliness, the great unhappiness of our modern time, our in industrial age, our high-tech age, time period. People, uh, we have lots of food, we have lots of stuff, lots of things, I mean, no doubt physical life is better, easier, more convenient. But unfortunately, it was a trade. 
that has gotten better, but our social life has been destroyed. Our spiritual life has been destroyed. And indeed, even our mental abilities, our intellect, our ability to think has been quite destroyed. We've gained a lot of convenience, but we have become more like mindless machines, treated like mindless machines, raised by schools and media as if we were insects. That's sad, and that's why there's so many people who are so lonely, so disconnected, who feel a lack of meaning. Doesn't matter how much stuff they have, doesn't matter how much money they have, doesn't matter how much fame they have, they still feel an emptiness inside, a lack of meaning. No meaning, no purpose, no real love, no real connection in their lives. That's what's sad, and that is common, common, very, very common. So how do we defeat this evil of schooling? It's once we understand that red pill, we wake up like Neo, we realize, oh, the situation's terrible, this is terrible. But you can't stop at that point. If you stop at that point, you just feel depressed, you just weak, and you just surrender and you lose. Well, that's no good. So after we wake up and we see how terrible things are, we have to go then take the next step. How do we get stronger? How do we make things better? John Taylor Gatto, I just found a nice, another nice quote from chapter 5 where he talks about how do we defeat these, this school system? How do we de beat it? It seems so strong because right, the power of the government, the money of the government, is supporting these school systems. That's a lot of power. It's a lot of money. Here's what he says. Here's the quote. You cannot directly beat this devil of schooling. You cannot directly beat this devil of schooling. It has to be starved to death by depriving it of victims. Aha! Let's review that. Talk about the meaning of this quote. You cannot directly be this devil of schooling. So he's saying the, the schools, it's like the devil. It's a system. It's, it's, it's like one of the devil's system. And the devil is very, very powerful. You can't defeat the devil one-to-one -one in a fight. The devil's too strong. Right? Or a demon or a devil, right? Any kind of terrible, evil, magical, horrible creature. Just imagine, right? You can't beat it. You can't beat the devil directly. Right? So this, if the school is a devil, right? It's a devil that eats our children. It's a devil that eats children. You can't beat it. You can't fight it. You're not going to fight it like politically by going and fighting. You're not going to go and argue with the teachers and the staff and the principals and you're going to win. You're not. You're going to lose if you do that. You will lose. You might win some little small battle sometimes, but you're not going to change that system that way. There's no way. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it by getting like a new law passed to, you know, for more money or change the testing or you know all that stuff that people try to do is basically useless you cannot defeat this monster directly so how do we beat it John Taylor Gatta says we beat it by starving it we starve it to death right to starve means you you, you don't have any food Right? You die because you don't have food. You starve to death. If you starve to death, you die because you don't eat. So he's saying that's how we kill the schools. That's how we beat them. We starve them to death. We take away their food. What is their food? Their food is children. It's the children. The schools need to eat children. Without children, they have nothing. No power, nothing. Right? Without that 
food coming in every year, every year, every year. More kids, more kids, more children. Right? The victims, he says. Without those victims, the food of these children, the school will simply starve to death. Because then there will be nothing for the teachers to do. There will be nothing for the principals to do. Nothing for the staff to do. And if, there's, if there are no children in the system, nobody will give them money, right? There will be no reason for the schools to have money. You'll starve them to death. That's how you do it. By taking children out of the schools. As he says, depriving means removing the victims. The victims are the children. So if we think of the schools, this whole big system, the schools as a demon or a devil or a monster, and it's eating children, the children are the food, you take away the food, remove the food, and then it starves to death. You can't fight it directly in a big fight. It's not going to work. It's too strong. But when you take its food away, it becomes weak, 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 and then it just dies, slowly dies. That's how you do it. And of course, what that means is, basically that means homeschooling or some other kind of, you know, independent family education. Every family can decide their own way. There are many ways to do it. But the main thing is you take your child out or your children, you take them out of the government schools, you take them out of these industrial schools, take them out of the system, stop feeding your children to the demon, to the devil. And as more and more and more families, more and more and more parents do this, as they more and more children leave the school system, it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. It takes time, you know, for a huge change like this in society, it takes time, but you can just focus on your own family and your own children. That's enough, right? If there's this big demon, don't feed your children to the demon, to the devil, and your children are safe. Don't worry how long until the devil dies. It might take many, many, many hundreds of years. We don't know. Just do your part. Don't feed your children to that devil. Now this process is happening in many parts of the world already. As far as I know, homeschooling in the United States is probably the most popular. It's probably biggest in the United States, the homeschool movement. I might be wrong. I don't know. If, if you know of another country where homeschooling is really popular and growing fast, please tell me. But as far as I know, America really has started this. But, you know, I think that's good because America also... <laughs> America was responsible for this horrible system we have, this schooling system. Some people say it started in Prussia, Germany this horrible, terrible system we have. But it became quite a big and popular system in the United States. The United States was one of the first countries to really do this industrial school system in a big way. And force, force, with guns, force children into these schools. So, since we, meaning Americans, since Americans helped to cause this problem, Americans, not, not only Americans, like the Germans too, but Americans certainly helped to create this demon, so I think it's good that Americans now are at the front fighting it and trying to destroy it. Maybe that's our karma. <laughs> right? But anyway, it's very encouraging in the United States what's happening because homeschooling is growing and it's growing even faster now. You know, it was steadily growing, but now we're starting to see in uh, so many horrible stories. The schools are becoming much, much worse, much faster. 
I mean, the, the, the crazy stuff that is happening now in, the, in schools all around the world and certainly in America. It's, it's so crazy that parents are becoming disgusted. They're just becoming angry and they're sick of it. Before, maybe they're li they believe some of the lies about schools or they're afraid to be different. But as they learn more and more of what's happening in the schools, and the, the crazy stuff they're teaching them now, very political, crazy political stuff. You know, like the whole uh, transvestite thing, where, you know, the men who dress as women and say they're women and then they bring them into the schools to read books to the kids and try to tell the kids this is normal and encourage it. And uh, just crazy stuff like that is happening in American schools. And as you might guess, a lot of parents are saying this is disgusting this is terrible and enough and they take their kids out and they homeschool them and then they find out very quickly oh wow the kids are doing better they're learning more they're learning faster they're happier our family is stronger we have a much better family relationship everything gets better and then they become very enthusiastic about homeschooling and they tell everybody else in their family they tell all their friends and then it just grows and grows this way so the school's getting worse and worse and worse homeschooling becoming more and more popular it's a it's a nice thing that's happening in this way actually I don't even care now I, I'm actually sometimes I see another crazy story about education schools in America and some uh, more another crazy thing and I sometimes I now I even just celebrate because I realize good they're making it faster more parents will become angry and unhappy more families will leave the school system will starve this devil faster so let them be crazy the, the more crazy they are <laughs> the faster they will die so that's the good part right? when you hear about all this terrible stuff happening in schools there's kind of a nice side to it don't feed the demon don't feed the devil that's all you got to do it's actually quite easy you don't have to fight it it's much easier fighting that devil is tough okay you, you'll hear stories people uh, let's say a child gets a put in a class like a, like a small child in third grade you know eight years old something like that and they get they go to their new third grade class and the teacher sucks the teacher's no good or the teacher doesn't like your child for some reason and then the parents will try to do something they'll go in and they'll complain and I want the, my child to go to a different class yeah, maybe you're lucky they say okay but many times they say no no you can't sorry this is your child's class and then the parents get into this big battle and they're they complain and they write letters and they do a big campaign and there's this big big long 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 fight and arguing with the teacher and arguing with the school system and you can see who's the slave and who's the master the school system is the master and the parents are begging and begging and begging for something different school right that that's not right the parents should be the master if they want their kid their child in a different class they should just do it instantly not ask permission but that's what happens because these this demon is very strong the devil's very strong and so they fight and 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 they fight and, and it takes so much time and energy and anger and all of this <laughs> And at best, if they're lucky, they finally win and their child goes to a new class, a new teacher. But then what happens? Maybe the next year they get another bad teacher or maybe fifth grade or sixth grade or seventh grade. It happens again. Then what? You got to fight that same battle again. You see how hard that is to fight the devil directly? The devil's too strong. But if you just withdraw, you just leave. There's no battle. It's easy. It's easy. And it's actually more effective. You make the devil weaker. And for you, you get stronger. You don't waste any of your energy or time anymore on the school, fighting the school and all their crazy rules and bureaucracies and different levels of, you know, teachers and then vice principals and then principals and staff and you don't have to deal with any of it anymore. You just leave. 
You just leave and then you have a very simple life. It's just you and your children. That's it. How many children do you have? Even if you have a big family, I don't know. My sister has five kids. Even five kids, that's nothing. It's nothing for homeschooling, it's easy. Five kids. I mean, you know, in school, five kids would be a tiny class, right? I mean, imagine how happy you would be if you, your child went to school and they put your child in a class with one teacher and, and only five children. I mean, that, would, that would be, oh my God, it's such an advanced program. It's so great. Only five children per teacher. That's amazing. Right? Because normally it's 20 kids per teacher, 30 kids per teacher, sometimes even more. But this is what's so weird. But then, and yet, uh, you know, some parents will worry about homeschooling, but oh, I've got, I've got three children. And, and they think, and they, they get worried about that. Well, that's crazy. Three children. That's easy. Easy, easy, easy. Even five children, even six, even eight children would be small. Right? Well, you know, you as an adult are an independent learner. You are an independent learner. You have escaped the school system finally. You escaped the devil. Maybe you have some pain from that. <laughs> we all do. But you escaped and now you're an independent learner and that's what's great. And all my programs are designed for independent learners. You choose. You are the master. To speak English powerfully, fluently, confidently, join my VIP program. Join my VIP program today. Join at Effortless English club.com join my vip program today at effortless english club.com let's continue on a few more quotes i'm just pulling quotes out of the book <laughs> chapter five our last chapter we're almost done with this book so i'm just pulling out some ideas, some thoughts, some little sections from the book to chat about. Here's another one. A few more quotes. And these are more on the positive side, the solution side. Trust families to know what's best for themselves. We need whole family, multi-generational learning. Aha! It's quite similar to something I always say to you as an adult. I always say, trust yourself, trust yourself, trust yourself, right? Be the master of your own life. Trust yourself. Will you be perfect? No. Will you make mistakes? Yes. But I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. So it's crazy to trust someone else to tell you what to do in life. As an adult, trust yourself. Well, this is a, a similar version. It's a very similar idea what John Taylor Gatto is saying. He's saying with education and families, we need to trust families to know what's best for themselves. So again, it's, you know, each family, we have to trust that each family can f decide for themselves, right? You can't take responsibility away from other people. A lot of this evil system, the idea is that, oh, parents, they can't make these decisions. No, we have to decide for them. The mom and dad can't decide what's best for their children. No, 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 no. The government will decide. We, whoever we is, right? We is whoever has the power. We will decide because they're too stupid. They're too foolish to decide. Well, that's wrong. That is evil. That is Animal Farm. Nope. We have to trust. We have to trust other people to make their own decisions about their own life and their own families. And, you know, trust them to make mistakes too. They're going to make mistakes. They might make bad choices, but so do you. You make bad choices. It's okay. Trust yourself to learn from the choices and to keep going. It's the only way. 
So we have to trust families, not these schools, not the teachers, not the administrators, not the politicians. Trust yourself, trust yourself to teach your children. And then he says we need whole family, multi-generational learning. That's quite interesting too. It's, 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 it's the positive side of something he's talked about a lot in this book. He's criticized a lot this, this thing we do when we put kids in a room with everybody's the same age, right? Third graders, they're all in a room with other third graders. Again, like they're machines, and all the machines have to be the same. That's unnatural. It's that there, no human society is like that. That is not a healthy human society. A real human society has all different ages. I mean, this is the natural way. And the younger ones, the younger generations, are supposed to learn from the older ones. And the older ones benefit from the younger ones. The younger ones' creativity, the younger ones' energy and enthusiasm. Right? Everybody benefits. And every generation and age has different strengths and weak points and benefits and we destroy that when we force everybody to be the same age in the class so we need to change that and again in a natural family in a real family family education you have multi-generational multi meaning many generations of learning many ages right so at the at least if if it's just you and your children you have you as an adult and then your children who are probably different ages right unless you have twins because even children learn from each other younger children learn from older children older children learn from younger children too because older children they get to be more responsible. They, they are in a kind of leadership position with their younger brothers and sisters. And that's very good for them. They can learn a lot from that. It can also make them feel good. They have their younger brother or sister usually will look up to them and admire them. And of course, as the adult, we, we help them do this. And of course, the younger child, the younger children, copy their older brothers and sisters and learn from them too it's all different ages and even better if we look at real human societies that were healthy and natural before this system it used to be more generations right we used to have the grandparents around also so you would also have grandparents you'd have grandparents that age and then you'd have the parents plus uncles and aunts that's the next generation. Then you would have the kids, and the kids would all be different ages too. That's natural, real human society. And that's natural, real, whole family education. With each generation teaching something. I agree. I totally agree with him about that. We need multiple generations. And, you know, even if you look back, there might even be more. There might have been a great-grandparent or great-grandparents in the house or, you know, nearby also. Where you could have all those generations all together with all these different very natural relationships. Each teaching and learning from each other and contributing to each other. That's a natural, strong, healthy human society the opposite of what we have today but we need to go back to that this idea of separating kids by age we have to destroy that get rid of it it's a it's a bad idea it doesn't work finally he gives a little bit of hope a little bit of encouragement about homeschooling and independent learning for families he says don't be panicked by scare tactics into surrendering your children to experts. Excellent advice. Don't be panicked. Panicked means, uh, you know, like high, high level of fear. Don't be, don't be scared. That's basically what that means. Don't be scared. By scare tactics, fear tactics, fear methods. Right? Because the schools and the media and even people that you know, friends and family and strangers, they all will bring up all of these fears, 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 fears about 
homeschooling, about leaving the school system. Uh, there's so many. I, usually just, there's five or six. They always say, you know, the same ones all the time. They're same little tactics to try to make you afraid so that you won't leave their system. But he says, don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't believe those scare tactics. Don't believe what they're saying because it's not true. All that stuff you're worried about and afraid that they're saying, oh my, what about s socialization? My child won't be able to socialize. Or, oh. you know, I'll talk about a few specific ones in a minute. But basically it says it's just designed to make you afraid. It's designed to control you. So you will continue to send your children to the schools. That's all that is. It's just designed to make you afraid. He says, don't be afraid. Don't surrender. Don't give your children to experts. And that this is one of the tactics. It's one of the propaganda tactics the schools use is this idea that they are experts, right? They give you the idea that you as a parent, you don't know. What do you know? You don't know anything about education. But we are the experts because our teachers, they all went to college and they studied how to be a teacher. They have a certificate in education. They're experts. Oh, and then our principal has a PhD, a doctorate in education theory. We are the experts. So you give your children to us because we know better. Let me just tell you, that is a hundred percent lie. And this one I can tell you directly because I actually have a degree. I have a master's degree in teaching English, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I went through, I know, I, I went through these, this so-called education training. And let me tell you, these people are not experts. These people are not even intelligent. Are there some intelligent teachers? Of course there are. Are there some nice teachers who really care? Of course there are. But the system overall, let me tell you, the average school teacher is not smart. Okay? They are below average. They are below average. The smart people, the smartest people, the most intelligent people in universities don't usually, not usually, a few do, but most don't, go into education. They go into other topics, other subjects. And yes, I'm making myself look bad by saying this, <laughs> but it's the truth. I got to share you the, with you the truth. They're not very smart. Okay. I was disgusted by this. When I got my master's, I got my master's in education because I was traveling, living in other countries teaching English just you know I just did it myself I figured it out it wasn't it wasn't that difficult to figure out it, it took me time but I started figuring out better better ways to do it but I decided well I'll get the master's degree because I can make some more money while I do this I want to continue traveling and living in other countries this is probably the easiest way to do it if I get a master's degree, I can get easier, better jobs at universities, for example, doing this. So I went to school and I did it. But let me tell you, it was super easy. Okay, it, it was it was like middle school level of of work, of thinking. The professors were mostly stupid. I'm just okay. I'll be 100% straight with you. My social work professors were stupid. I had a couple good professors as far as teaching English at Shenandoah University, a couple very good ones. But, you know, I also have a uh, degree in social work. And let me tell you, they're just not that smart. Okay? And most of the people that I saw and met who were studying to be teachers, they did it because it was just easy. And even I was doing it because it was easy. It was a kind of an easy way at that time, an easy way for me to live abroad, live in other countries. I eventually, I began to love it, but I couldn't stay in the school system. What's the point? The point is, you are just as smart as they are, okay? They don't have any special knowledge. Quite the opposite. They don't have any special skills. They don't have any kind of magic uh, secret knowledge about how to teach children. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They're just doing what they're told. Okay? 
It's nothing. Go watch a class sometime. If you really think, if you're really scared, you think these teachers are doing something special, go sit in a class. Any, any age. Just go sit in a class and watch it. And, and just really watch exactly what, what is the teacher doing? What are they teaching? And ask yourself, is this anything special? Can I do this? I guarantee you'll say yes. It's, it's nothing special at all. And absolutely you can do it. Most of them just read from a textbook. And get, do some stupid little activities from a book. It, it's complete nonsense. Is 90% of the time is wasted. These are not experts. They're no better than you. Usually they're worse than you. And they're definitely worse because not only they're not as smart as you are probably, they're certainly not smarter. They have no special knowledge. But then the worst part is they don't care about your child like you do. They don't love your child or your children. They don't love them. They don't care about them very much. Even the good ones might care some, but they have a class of 20 or 30 people. They can't care too much. Okay? You love your children. You will do anything for your children. It's just, it's not even close. Okay? You are a much better teacher. Even if you did not do well in school. And, you know, by the way, this is also true. Some people will, sometimes they'll say, yes, but what about the poor people who are not smart? They're still better. They're still better teachers because, again, they love and care for their children. They still would be better teachers. In most countries in the world, those people also, they can at least read. Well, that once you can read, you you have the magic key to independent learning so they can teach their children to read they'll get motivated if you just stop telling them they're stupid stop making them slaves stop making them weak so don't give your kids to experts because they're not experts they're not really experts they're fools they are fools who are following a terrible system that doesn't work and that is the truth! <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's talk about some of the other scare tactics. What other things do you hear to try to scare you to follow this system? Send your kids to the school. What else do they say to make you afraid, worried? One, we just talked about teacher training. That's a joke. What's the next one? Socialization. Uh, this one's always mentioned. What about socialization? I've talked about this one already several times. It's com it's just a scare tactic just to make you afraid. It's again a big, big, big lie. Children do not learn good social skills at school. The opposite. They learn terrible social skills at school. At school they learn bullying. At school they learn the strongest rule the weak. At school, they learn, be the same, conform, try to be cool, or everyone will laugh at you. That's not social. That's not healthy socialization. That's very negative, terrible socialization. Humans, little kids and older, they learn socialization from older people. That's how you learn things, right? You learn from people who are better than you. That's how you learn, not from others who are just as foolish as you are, or just as young as you are, just as ignorant as you are. I, I don't want to learn the guitar from someone who's just as bad as I am. What's the point? They can't teach me. And it's the same with kids. Your seven-year-old kid cannot learn good social skills from another seven-year-old. What does that seven-year-old know? Nothing. Right? The same that your kid knows. Both of them are clueless. They don't know. How do they learn more positive social skills? How do they learn how to solve arguments and deal with problems without bullying? How do they learn to be good human beings in a good society and have good communication skills and good negotiation skills? And not, not to be weak, but also not to be bullies. How do they learn those things? They learn from, well, ideally from adults. They learn from parents, uncles, aunts, 
They also learn from older brothers, sisters, cousins. That's how they learn these things, right? They have to learn by being taught and they learn by watching others who have better skills. So putting them with other kids their same age, just put all these seven-year-olds together and you think they're going to learn social skills, that is crazy. It doesn't work. They're not learning anything useful or positive or good. They're learning the law of prison, the law of the jungle, strongest, rule the weakest. <laughs> Read Lord of the Flies, that's what that is. School is Lord of the Flies. Another good book. Add it to our list, huh? What's another scare tactic that they try to scare you so you'll go to school? One second, I'm gotta get out of the rain again. Dang on it. Raining. Now get under the bridge. All right, here we go. Under the bridge now. <laughs> Okay. You get the idea, right? The, another one they'll scare you with is, you know, certification, diploma. Oh, if my kid doesn't go to school, they won't get the magical piece of paper. The magic paper. The magic paper. In America, the magic paper is a high school diploma. It's called a high school diploma. Maybe some countries it's called a high school certificate, a certificate, whatever. The magic paper is all important. We, it, it's not important what they actually learn. It's not important that they're good people. It's not important that they're happy. It's not important they are individuals. It's not important the education is excellent. Just the paper. It's another scare tactic, another method of fear. And again, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. I can't talk about every single country in the world and the laws and the rules. I can only talk about the United States that I know the best. But in the United States, this is zero problem. None at all. Does not matter. Homeschool kids very easily go to university. And they all don't want to go to university, but some go. Some choose to go to university, to college. They have no problem getting in get into a university in the United States, you typically need a high school diploma paper and you need a test score like the SAT. Not always though. There are many, many schools that don't require the test score. And the diploma, it's very easy to also just take a test. You don't have to go to a high school. We have in America, there's something called the GED. GED, it's basically just a test. It's just a test and it, it's a high school test. If you pass the test, you get a little score that says, congratulations, you finished high school. You don't have to go to high school, just take the test. It's not a difficult test. So easy, homeschool kids, that's all they do. They just take the GED test. If they want that paper, they take a GED test. Congratulations, you've got a piece of paper now. They don't have to waste all their life going to the actual classes and schools and all that terrible stuff. It's really easy. Another cool thing, there's something called CLEP tests, C-L-E-P. CLEP tests, these are tests of college courses. Like you could take, for example, you could do a CLEP test in biology, college biology CLEP test. So what you do is uh, the child could learn biology at home independently and then, you know, maybe spend a few months preparing for the test, take the CLEP test, guess what? Because if they get a good score on the CLEP test, they get credit, college credit, for biology. It's like they, they pass that class, but they don't have to actually go to university and take the course. Many homeschool kids take these CLEP tests and they, they finish one or two or even sometimes almost three, two and a half years of college just with the test. They don't actually go to college. They just do tests and they get enough credit. <laughs> so when they start college, they only have to pay for one and a half years or two years. 
because they've, they've already they've done most of it at home they've done over half of it at home and they just took these tests it's a great system great system and of course now we're getting all these online colleges and universities and college courses and so you could do your child could do CLEP tests and that would you know for two two full years of school and the CLEP test is much cheaper by the way it's very very cheap compared to paying for college classes college classes are a big waste of money the CLEP test is much cheaper so they take lots of CLEP tests they now they've got about two years of college credit then they could just join into a, a university an online program there are many of them now you can do them even doesn't matter what country you're from because most of them are international most accept international students your child probably needs to take a TOEFL test so they'll need to learn some English if they want to do an American one but again very easy it's, it's the same your child could take the GED even if your child let's say your child's from Spain you're from Spain uh, you could have your child learn English at home with effortless English <laughs> take the TOEFL take the American GED that high school test which is not hard G get into take the CLEP test get into a online program American or international and then graduate in just the two years and these online programs are so much cheaper and they're much more independent too so even if even if you think your child needs or wants a college a paper from college it can be done very independently now and much much more cheaply than the old way of going for four years and your child can completely avoid the school system completely avoid the horrible high school systems middle school elementary all that can they can spend their whole childhood at home with family homeschooling home learning and education and even maybe the first two years of university they can be independent too they could live at home with you if they want to or they could live independently and get a part-time job or something either way they can do the CLEP tests and online programs and they can avoid most of that horrible stuff and still get the little piece of paper if they need it everybody doesn't need the piece of paper but some people do you know like I said I got a master's in teaching English because at that time it was before effortless English of course at that time it was it was a good money decision that's all it was it was a hundred percent a financial money decision it was nothing about education it was nothing about learning sadly but it, that's true I just determine how much will it cost me to get this and then how much more money and will I make and will the jobs be more fun and easier to get and I decided yes it's a good deal so I did it that's totally fine you can of course your child may do that but again homeschooling will not stop your child from doing that okay so it's another nonsense fear this thing about papers and degrees and diplomas just do some research look into it it's easily solved this this fear is easily solved okay let's move on I think the final thing I want to conclude with is a thought and that is that you are responsible for your own life and no one else you are responsible for your own life as a parent you are responsible for your family no one else is see I think the schools this demon this devil of schools gets a lot of power by trying to take away responsibility right telling people making people believe that they are not good enough right you are not good enough to teach your own children no 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 you are not responsible 
for your children's education. Someone else should do it. Let, a, let an expert do it. Let somebody else do it. We'll do it for you. This is a lie. It's a trick that the powerful use all the time. It's a propaganda trick. That's all it is. Because the truth is, the human truth is that you and only you are responsible for your own life and your own actions. No one else ever is. Blaming other people is foolish because they are not responsible for your life. Uh, asking someone else to tell you what to do is foolish. Like, I never do that. People ask me this. You know, what should I do? I'll ask questions. I might give my thoughts, but I can't tell you what to do. It's your life. It's your life. I can give you ideas. I can give you suggestions. I can share with you all my opinions, but you are responsible for your life. You have to decide. You do it, and you will get the results. You might like the results. You might not like the results, but you are responsible, and then you're responsible to learn and to keep trying and to keep doing and continue to make decisions. This is the number one attitude you must have in your life to get control of your life again, to have a feeling of power and confidence in your life, to live truthfully and honorably in a good way. You have to first take responsibility. You must accept that you are responsible, no one else. Others might help you, or they might not, but you are ultimately, finally responsible. And as a parent, this is also true for your whole family, not just you as an individual. Until your children become adults, you're responsible. You know this. But nobody else is. Not some teacher at school. Uh, not anybody else. You. And only you can be responsible for their education. When we try to give away responsibility, sometimes by blaming other people, oh, they did something bad to me, <laughs> or sometimes saying, oh, I'm not good enough, whatever it is, whenever we try to do that, we suffer more. This is the central truth you must start with. You are responsible. You are the master of your own life. You and only you. Okay, looks like the rain has mostly stopped. I'm going to walk back home. I hope you're having a great day. As always, join my VIP program. Join my VIP program. Train English with me. Join my VIP program. Speak English fluently and confidently. Speak English effortlessly. Join my VIP program today at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's EffortlessEnglishClub.com.